Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm just done with my first mass started race in a long time. This is the full gas racing series. It's a, it's a pretty popular uh, racing series in London. And uh, I did this the first time, like this was my first race that I did in London when I just arrived here. And at that time I was not fit. At that time I was just getting out of my injury. Uh, but in any case, it was a very tough race at that time. So I got lapped. Uh, it's a 25 lap race and I got lapped in the first 10 laps itself, after which I had to drop out. But yesterday I performed much better because I've improved. I'm becoming stronger now. Um, and I uh, lasted the full 25 laps. I even was going to, I, you know, I attacked, I countered. So I went head to head and I feel really good about that. So I'm just quickly going to walk you guys through the race to give you an idea of what differences I felt. I felt that, you know, to make this uh, uh, video useful for those of you who tune in and give your time to listen to me, um, I'm going to draw some comparisons between what differences I have felt in races in India and how this race is different and how just the, the general feel of a bunch over here is very different. So uh, first of all, like I'm just looking at my Strava graph and everything and I have all my data in, in front of me. So uh, when you look at the Strava graph, the elevation graph, you can see that uh, it's, it's, it's not a flat race. Uh, this is the same circuit that I do for my time trial races and um, it's not flat. It's, it's always crosswind or headwind on one side. And in our case, we got uh, headwind on the section which was flat, but uh, then there's climbs on the other side. So it's, it's not an easy race to do at all. And it's also circuitous. So when you look at that and then you see the speed still being an average of 40 kilometers an hour for 40 kilometers of the almost 40 kilometers of the race, uh, it really signifies the level of competition because despite a good speed, despite attacking and staying, sticking with you know the, the leaders of the race, I still end up finishing 30th out of the 75 people who started the race. So, it really gives you an indication of uh, the level of ability that riders have outside India and helps you place yourself like where you stand in the world. And these aren't even the best racers over here. Uh, they're, they're very good racers and they're far better than racers that I've encountered in um, Mumbai or races around Mumbai in Pune, other places that I've been to. But they're not the best over here. And that really helps you place yourself like where you stand um, you know, in, in the positioning in the world. So, uh, you know, my strategy in the race was just to stick with the bunch as long as I can. And I was going to, I wasn't really planning on winning this race. I hadn't even expected that I could finish the race with this bunch because it's a big deal to do that. And you will probably know of other riders also who have been abroad and when they race um, with, in circuits abroad, it's, you often get dropped or lapped uh, really quickly. So it's a big deal for me that I could finish this race right now. And I finished with a placing also, uh, which is, again, a landmark for me. But what I'll say to you is that finishing in the first bunch is not a big deal anywhere in the world, like even in India. And people often place too much importance on just finishing with the bunch. So this was a big deal for me personally because I'm coming out of an injury every landmark I hit right now is an achievement it shows me that I've improved but in general objectively speaking it's not a big deal if you finish with the first bunch and this really this is really important to understand because our race strategies in India are so different like what what cyclists in India end up doing is that you know everyone wants to stick around with the lead bunch and just try and fight for it in the sprint without even realizing that there may be someone in that bunch who's going to eat you alive in a sprint. So why are you even waiting for the finish line just so that you can put up a status or just tell people that, you know, you end up finishing with the first bunch. It doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. Uh, in India, the racers often, uh, you know, out of a bunch of 20 or 25, 30 riders who are racing, uh, out of that whole bunch, there'll be probably five or six guys who are actually dictating the race and everyone waits for them to make a move. Everyone's waiting for them that when that guy will attack, we'll counter him. Or maybe we'll launch a little bit of attack and wait for him to catch or whatever, like something like that. But basically the race revolves around those few guys who are the main guys in a race. It's very different over here. There are main guys who people mark out even over here, but there are so many people who are really good that you really don't have time to mark every single one. And there'll be attacks throughout. Like in, 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 in this race, in the mass start, you know, so we didn't go slow at any point, except the, the section where we had the headwind, where everyone would just sort of coalesce together and uh, get closer, as close as possible to uh, eke out the draft of riders ahead of you. And we just let someone go ahead to take the beating of the headwind because it's really brutal. It was like, 
I don't know, like 20, 25 kilometers an hour winds over there, 22, 25, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, we, we don't get any wind at all in races in Mumbai or in, in India. There's hardly any wind over there. So wind plays a very big role in riding and racing over here. Uh, and that's the only segment in the race, section of the race where people were sort of slowing down. Anywhere else where the lead guys were even easing up on the pace a little bit, someone else would attack and you know the race pace just stayed up. There's no point where there are no attacks happening. There's, uh, you know, there's no, uh, there's no coasting basically. And I noticed this a lot in races in India where everyone starts off really fast. Like everyone's going to go, abhi attack karna hai. Sprint abhi chalo, abhi flag off, abhi attack karna hai. Lead lena hai. Are, think about it. There's a, there's a whole bunch of people behind you. They'll obviously catch you and you'll burn yourself out. Strategize properly. So what happened in this race is in the first lap, no one really attacked. It was like a neutral lap. You just moved out of the starting line and uh, after that the biggest attacks were happening on the climbs and on the turns not in the headwind section because that section is very difficult to maneuver and control if someone's wheel would touch over there it would be very difficult um, to control except in the last lap there were attacks like throughout so the first thing that i uh, think cyclists in india should know is uh, you need to improve your group riding skills like over here we were so coalesced together, like so tightly notched up together. There were about, you know, 70, 60 riders who are just very close to each other. And they're going at really fast pace, like a 45, 44, sometimes even 50 kilometers an hour. On the small circuit, it's just a two lane circuit and it's circuitous. There are lots of turns. If you look at the graph on Strava, if I can just count them for you, you know, so as soon as we start, there's one big turn, then there's another turn and like a full 180 degree like you're going a full u-turn but i mean the good thing is the road is banked very well so even at a higher speed you can do it but you have to hold that line like you can't if you're taking a turn you can't take a turn from lane one and get into lane two by the end of the turn you stay in lane one so it's it's very difficult and you have like eight guys, seven guys next to you and a bunch of guys behind you, a bunch of guys ahead of you. It's very difficult to manage that group skill. And I don't see that in um, like most of the local races in India, that that group skill is lacking. And it really tells upon how you perform because you lack the confidence then to um, handle a group. The next thing is that cornering is extremely important, your cornering skill. In India, most races are usually flag off, straight out, U-turn, come back. So there's not really some great cornering skill that is employed. And so racers in India, they don't really focus much on uh, improving their cornering either. Now, uh, in this race, because there's so many turns, you have to, you can't stop pedaling when you're cornering. So you can't, you, you continue pedaling even on the corners. And what's important is as soon as you get out of the corner, someone's going to attack over there. So you have to like be ready to attack as soon as you get out. And we don't really train for these things in Indian circuits. So in fact, the few racers who are really good in India, they, they perform very well at the corners as well because they sprint as soon as they get out of the corners. But it's not comparable to how people perform here. Like in India, when you're taking a U-turn, you end up, you stop pedaling because you're taking the turn. <laughs> but your skill should be such that even when taking the turn, you are still pedaling. And uh, as soon as you get out, you attack. So that's very important. That's to develop that skill because that's where you can distance the bunch. And even if that bunch, the bunch behind you ends up catching you, they still have burned some matches in trying to catch up to you. And that's what mass start racing is about. It's about burning matches, like ensuring that other people burn their matches. And by the end, by the time they get to the sprint line, the finish line, you have either dropped them off or they don't have enough energy to even sprint out. So the mistake that because it's a wrong perception, it's a wrong, wrong way of approaching a race uh, that people do in India is that, you know, they wait, they allow uh, even a good sprinter to get to the finish line with them. And by, when, by the time they get to the finish, like I have faced this so many times in races because uh, before my accident, I was a, a very powerful sprinter um, and I wouldn't care if someone uh, was with me in the bunch. I didn't need to drop them in the race. But I would like to, but I didn't need to do it because I know that I can take them on in the final sprint. Like, what are you going to do then? So I'm, I'm rest. I can rest assured throughout the days that I just have to hang, hang around over here and get to the line, and I'll sprint and I'll drop these guys then. Whereas someone who's not a more powerful sprinter has to think about this. But what they end up doing in India is they just think that you know 
let me just get to the finish line wahan jaake dekhenge kya hota hai which is such a wrong way of approaching uh, the race because your strategy is completely skewed then you're not working to your strength you're letting me dictate the game or whoever the powerful rider is you're letting them dictate the game you are waiting for them to make a move and so you're never going to be working at your body's comfort level you're working based on their body's comfort level so it's it's a game that is dictated by whoever is calling the shots and if you're not calling the shots when you're tired someone's going to attack you're going to get dropped when you get near near the finish line they're going to get dropped so work through your strengths and identify how you can do that either do it by help, by by the help of a teammate or you do it by you know yourself if you have a strength in climbing or a strength in something else identify that and play to your strengths um so yeah that's 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 very important and um at the end of this race also despite me performing far better than what i'd expected with such a speed we still had about 40 people in the final bunch so that really tells you finishing with the final bunch doesn't really mean anything i finished 30th because i really tried getting out of that bunch towards like uh, for half a kilometer i was trying nearly more than half in fact that whole last lap it's about 1.6 kilometers each lap the whole of the last lap i was just trying to get ahead so that i can be position myself for the final sprint because i really felt that I could take them on uh, in this race and I'd improved and I wanted to know like you know um, I've spoken about this before that in races it's very important that uh, like when you do the final sprint you should feel that you've gone all out like there shouldn't be this sense of regret this feeling of regret that, I know I could have gone harder I could have taken that guy I was about to take him that sense of regret should never happen and that's something that I felt yesterday because um, I mean I I did the race really well I hung around with them I countered I attacked everything went really well but i just didn't get the opportunity to launch a sprint because there were so many guys ahead of me and i mean it's a narrow road there's no way to go i in fact for me to get from 40 to 30 i had to go slightly off road onto the grass and jump back in like i hopped <laughs> on my bike i bunny hopped my bike off uh, off the grass back onto the the pavement back onto the road so it's very dangerous because you know at those speeds with so many people behind you it's just not possible and i that's when i decided oh dude I can just go for another race another sprint let's just let, let's just take this as a learning and uh, try better next time but it's definitely given me some of my confidence back because racing is a lot about confidence you need to know which gap is actually a gap like is it a gap or is someone going to come and fill in and you'll crash with them don't just get your wheel into any space that you see so it really gives you like you need that confidence and only when you do this again and again and again then you get that level of confidence that killer instinct where you know this is when i have to launch my attack and this is where the gap is right so it takes a while to build that and for me also because i hadn't raced in a year after my accident that instinct that sort of it sort of gets diluted and this race has definitely helped me get some of that back but um, it's still going to take a while about 2 3 more months of good racing for me to uh, you know perform better again as i used to before but i'm really happy with this performance and i hope you guys also learn something from this uh from this video and uh yeah i have about four more races coming up in the next 10 days so i'm really looking forward to all that is in store and uh thank you for tuning in this really means a lot to me that you know you guys tune in and uh, give me your feedback tell me what you like tell me what you don't like uh because it feels great that i have someone to share these small joys with and these landmarks as i keep hitting them so thank you all for your support and love and for tuning into the video uh until next race <laughs> see you then Bye